Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video I'll be going over the Atari 2600 sprite system and I'll go quickly over the playfield. So stick around for that. Okay so before I get you the subject at hand, as you notice I'm not really using Windows, I'm using the Linux system, uh, the Ubuntu distribution. And that is simply because I, my hard drive, my hard drive of containing Windows, completely burned out. So I don't, I lost everything with that. However, I did have a dual boot system at one of them containing Linux. It's a smaller hard drive and so forth, but it works fine. And I took a while, but I did install Eclipse uh, or, or the Stella and all the other dependencies that I needed in order to keep this running and working. So it should be exactly the same as our window environment. And uh, if you're using Mac as well, it should be exactly the same as long as you have our Eclipse IDE running. It should work fine. If you assemble over here, as you see, have the exact same code, the exact same uh, expectation that we have to our everything running perfectly so I'll set uh, setting done let's get to the subject at hand and that is the sprite system and uh, before I go to the sprite system just remember that the Atari 2600 is a really old machine and by the time it came out there even a bit after there's not really a concept about sprites instead let me open over here that I have my Stella uh, programming manual that came for every uh, programmer at the time I had to read in order to learn how to work with it. Instead we have these objects over here. And all of them here you have your column. You can change their column in luminosity using the raster. But the object that represents our sprites are B0, which is your player one. We have M0, which is a missile zero. We, in all of them, we can change the color using the co color and luminosity P0. And the same thing, you have a P1, which is player 1 and missile 1. As you notice, P1, P0 and P1 is player 1 and player 2, respectively. And all of, both of them actually has a missile. And then you can work for play field in our ball, the play field. They share the same color, and you can have our background. And we we were working with the column luminosity background. Let me open the not you. Let me open the uh, the Eclipse ID. And that's how you've been using the color and luminosity background using this restoring what's an X in this register that's changing the color. So uh, that's one of the main objects our sprite system. And the one you're going to talk about is the play field. So if I go over here, call in play field, and here we have the play field. And here is our good description. The, three f the play field is 20 bytes wide, and you have three of them PF0, PF1, and PF2. Play field 0, 1, and 2. Like it says, play field 0 has 4, and the rest of those has 2. And if you want to notice over here, let's open back our style emulator that we have running. Here you have an emulator. Let's, here is the prompt, but you have a, the, your tier A tab, our input and output, and your audio. But we come here to PIA, and as you notice, here you have our, all the color and luminosity, be one, two, play field in background. And here you have your debug colors. It's pretty good to use when you when you're working with our with our from the code over here. There's a lot of good stuff over here, but what I want to show you guys is right here in the bottom, the PF for play field. And as you notice, I have four, five, six, and seven. That's play field zero. We don't care about the first enabled from zero to three. We care about the last four, which is four to seven. And then you have the next one, which is the play field one. You're seven to zero, and then you do inverse holder, zero to seven. And what's gonna happen? All the, all the 20 bytes is gonna only 
uh, it's gonna only show half of the screen only all the pixels come from all the way to the middle and the other 20 is gonna be mirrored to the other side so let me show you guys that so let me close this and uh, let's create a play field so the first thing uh, let's first give it a color so let's load a of the value uh, let's go and look up a a color let's see color for color for the Atari 600 uh, as soon as it's downloading it's thinking it's time uh, then you just go over here and put some random number meanwhile and uh, let's start that color what's in A to this color luminosity play field well, that's the color of play field uh, let me see if it loaded by now oh I don't know why my internet is slow so let's go back over here we can change it later no big deal and uh first since you're not really using the Y register let's load Y with the letter of value and then we're gonna put a this is the modulus normally but here the percent the percentage is really meaning a binary so all we care is about the last four so it doesn't matter what I put over here the, the Atari is gonna ignore it so let's just put three zero over here let's start what's in Y and play field zero PF zero so let me check one more time so yeah Oh, color palettes, luminosity. Uh, where was the place that I had? Yeah, let's go back over here. So we want the NTSC version. And uh, what color ones your? Let's say we want a purple, so six, four, something like that. And this is next, so as soon as you 10, 11, 12, that's A, B, C, D, and F correspondingly. So, six, four. So let's do six, four. And here we have our play field zero. So let's run this. Let's assemble and run. And as you see over here, as you notice, it is the first one. Oh, whoops. Oh, come back over here. Uh, and let me come over here on our debugger and press the TIA. As you notice over here, 4 is being light up. So, as you mentioned, so we have this 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 is right over here. And it's being mirrored to this side. So let me take this out over here. It's working just like expected. So then you can uh, change it for whatever. Let's say one and so forth. So let's assemble one more time. As you see, this is being mirrored to that side. So let me close that. All this Stella simulator over here. And uh, you can do the same thing with the other play fields. So, but this one's gonna be different. So let me just just zero everywhere. Oops, zero. Let me copy this. Let's play field one, and uh, let's do the same thing and then play field two. Remember, we have three play fields. And let's assemble and look at them. Uh, let's open your TIA tab and let's look at what you have over here. So, are you all zero out to playfield zero? And as you notice over here, we have playfield one right over here. We have one and one light up, so that works. And as you notice on the last one in playfield two, one and one is almost like a mirror image of itself. So, if I wanted to be corresponding correctly, I'll need to put the instead of seven over here should be zero. 
So if I want to just to mirror perfectly or something, something like that. So let me assemble. And that's pretty much the basics of the play field. So that's pretty much going to do f for this video. Uh, I did order another hard drive, hopefully install Windows in, a, in one part this time. It's pretty much my third hard drive that's been burned. I don't know if there's a voltage trial on my computer. I need to check. It is old, so no. But either way, uh, this Linux environment works fine for now. So with all that said, thanks for watching. And uh, in the next video, I'll probably go. O I'll go over the play field a, a little bit more in depth and show you guys how to do some. Uh, some basic objects uh, simply because if you oh, I said thanks for watching but let me finish this uh, if you notice like the first games like the what's the thing game that they had over there we notice the play field it's pretty much supposed to be like a border and so forth so but as time went by and people started working on knowing how to work the Atari 2600 a little bit better that's when um, we're starting to break out of that mode and start really using the Atari 2600 uh, for whatever they had in mind, whatever application they had in mind for the playfield, and that evolved. So even though the Atari 2600 is pretty much like the grandfather of of the gaming, it's not at the time you didn't know about at the time, especially when they just announced it release it people expected just to be the same format but people are smart and we learn how to use it better and without that in said finally that's all for this video and uh thanks for watching